The third and final series of experiments for the Coordinated Fire Attack Study brings us here to Fairborn, Ohio, where we take an exploratory look into strip mall fires. Commercial structures have been a long-standing challenge for the fire service due to their potential for structural collapse with lightweight bar joists, thin corrugated decking, and potential common cock lofts. This study focuses primarily on the sequencing of ventilation and suppression operations on the fire ground to improve victim survivability and firefighter safety. We're not just conducting training fires. These are our scientific experiments that we're running out here to hopefully increase firefighter safety, to better understand what's happening inside these structures. Thanks to the support of DHS FEMA's AFG program, you know, we've been able to bring our entire team out here and set up a mobile lab here in Fairborn, Ohio. Starting every morning, we run through a series of checks before we can begin the experiment. We ensure the fuel packages are placed properly, all the boxes are stacked where they're supposed to be and spaced properly. All of our channel checks are coming back positive, so that means all the temperatures are responding, the velocities are responding. All our cameras are in place, so checking both all the positions and every, all the functionality. And then we go up and set up additional remote cameras, such as firefighter cameras and roof cameras that are mobile, don't record back to our DVR system here in the trailer. Keith Stakes, who's running the project, has been down at City Hall with the Fairborn Fire Chief, briefing the fire department on the entire day's activities for each of the experiments we're going to conduct. So once the fire department arrives back on scene to start the day, we have a series of other checks that go on. We ensure all of our flow meters that are tied to every one of the hose lines is functional and flowing the proper flow rate. We set the apparatus positions, we set the crews, so our staff will go and do a daily briefing on what the expectations of all the different crews are for the fire scene. Once we get into experiment mode, we do a full radio check and accountability check of all firefighters on scene to ensure that they're all accounted for and their tasks are associated as proper, and then the countdown to ignition begins. This is our fire unit this time. We're going to have fire ignited in the rear. It's going to be in the opposite corner from where this vent is. The front door will be open from ignition. You see it's removed. We're going to see what kind of fire the front door can sustain, much like we have in the other experiments. As that layer starts to come down to the top of the boxes and we start to see a trend towards vent limited, we're going to take all front glass at the same time. That's going to be our backup crew out front led by Robin. Our fire attack folks are going to be on the two and a half minutes the primary suppression method. The volume of the strip mall compartments presents a unique challenge for us to find the appropriate fuel load to use. In the single family and multifamily, we we're able to leverage residential fuel packages, so mattresses, sofas, typical furniture you might find in a home. In the commercial structure, those fuel loads can vary dramatically based on the type of, of occupant in that commercial space. So what we did was we decided to use a Class A commodity box. The reason we chose these commodity boxes is they've been widely used in sprinkler testing since the 1970s. So they're a well-characterized fuel package. In each experiment, we measured temperatures both above and below the drop ceiling, as well as gas velocity in all of the ventilation openings that were used throughout the experiment. The primary variable we were looking at in this set of experiments was ventilation and how changes in ventilation affect fire dynamics. In order to quantify the fire dynamics and how fire dynamics in commercial occupancies differ from those in residential occupancies, we first started with an experiment where there was no exterior ventilation to see if the fire would become underventilated. The next experiment we increased the ventilation so that the front door was open from the time of ignition to see how large of a fire the front door alone could sustain and whether that fire would cause the windows on the front of the store to fail. In experiment five, we began looking at vertical ventilation and started by looking at a coordinated fire attack with a four foot by eight foot hole being opened simultaneous with the start of fire suppression. A survey of our project technical panel, which is composed of firefighters from departments throughout the country, indicated that a four foot by eight foot vertical ventilation hole is often a starting size for commercial occupancies. 
In the next experiment, we looked at a larger hole size, eight foot by eight foot, that was opened prior to the start of suppression to examine if lift occurred in the absence of suppression. In the last scenario, we also looked at an eight foot by eight foot hole and whether horizontal ventilation in addition to vertical ventilation resulted in an improvement or deterioration in conditions. What we're learning is to step back and to say that UL and the fire departments that they work with are saying, let's slow down. Let's look at the big picture. Let's look at the data. Let's talk about our experiences a little bit. And then let's come to some conclusions on what best practices really are. Not taking away from experiences, but using the data and the research and all the analysis that goes into it to come together and, and get one big picture and, and make a stronger, better, safer fire service. Each one of these ULFSRI studies that come along is something for the fire service to examine by taking a look at these studies, looking at the tactical considerations, and then taking those things and applying them to the fire ground. We've learned a lot since our fire started last week, being able to actually witness what truly happens with these structures in a short amount of time. I think we've had some surprises, definitely some things that I, um, we weren't expecting. And you know, for us, again, in the fire service, a lot of our decisions are made off of past experiences. And it takes time to get past experiences chiseled into your head. So besides the experiment process of this, but the ability to read smoke, watching the conditions, watching how fast these buildings went to failure, watching conditions that actually drove flash over in these buildings and how fast it happens, this is definitely going to change our approach. We see how fragile these are when there's fire introduced to the inside. A better understanding of how fire department interventions affect fire dynamics will help to set up future research into how to fight fires in commercial occupancies.